The flight assist system in Elite Dangerous alters your ship's control method, changing how your flight controls work and the dynamics at play when maneuvering. Flight assist does not change the performance of your thrusters or allow you to access more power, but it does allow for more control over where, how, and when a thruster fires, enabling maneuvers that are not possible with flight assist on. You can see the differences in handling on this Eagle Mark II as it performs some basic maneuvers around my fleet carrier. This footage is synced up to an external camera showing how I have to manipulate different controls in either mode. My flight setup is fairly advanced, but the principle at play is universal and will have similar effects whether you fly a keyboard, gamepad, or have a HOTAS setup like me. When flight assist is on, your ship will do three things. First, it will treat your throttle as an absolute range from zero to the maximum rated speed of your ship. It's like an extremely aggressive cruise control, in that your ship will try to maintain that speed, automatically applying forward or reverse thrust, as needed, up to a thruster's maximum output, and will hold that output as long as needed to attain that target speed as quickly as possible. Second, your ship will automatically counterbalance attitude changes to pitch, yaw, and roll. This means that when you center your steering controls, your ship stops rotating and will hold the direction it's currently facing. Third, if your ship is moving, flight assist will fire maneuvering thrusters automatically to align the nose of your ship with its direction of travel, known as a vector. The end result of this process is that your ship feels like an airplane in the atmosphere, even if it's operating out in space. This makes it easier to control and more familiar to the inexperienced. It's a good system overall, but this ease of use comes at the cost of placing a computer between you and your ship's controls, adding a degree of separation from pilot and machine. Turning flight assist off removes these computer interventions and enables a new, more realistic control scheme. Rather than an absolute throttle range, your throttle will function as a percentage of maximum output. This means that at 50% forward throttle, your main engine will accelerate forward at half its power. Acceleration in any direction using any thruster will work this way, meaning that it takes roughly the same amount of input to undo a maneuver as it does to do it in the first place. Changes to ship steering, known as attitude, are no longer counterbalanced. If you steer in one direction, you have to counter-steer in the other to stop. Your ship's orientation in relation to its direction of movement, or vector, is fully separated, allowing you to point the nose of your ship away from where you are flying without dragging your vector back into alignment with the nose. In short, your ship behaves like it should in zero gravity and will continue doing whatever you ask it to do until a counter-maneuver is performed to stabilize it. With flight assist on, all controller inputs must be maintained to keep moving. This offers a level of precision that makes docking and landing maneuvers easier. It also allows for more controllable single maneuvers and for safer handling characteristics around large structures, like ports or planet surfaces. Flight Assist manages maneuvering thrusters for you, making an understanding of them less necessary, though still generally helpful. Where Flight Assist suffers is on the prioritization of thrust. Turn too sharply, and you'll find that your ship will abruptly dump all its engine power into the mains, killing your momentum and possibly understeering a turn that you wanted to run wide. Flight assist favors mains over maneuvering and will suck power away from thrusters to power the engines, making any changes to attitude slower at speed than they would be with flight assist off. The difference isn't big, but it is noticeable and can make a difference in some situations. This control method also means that your steering controls are working harder your mouse will travel around the pad more, or your flight sticks will spend a lot more time shifting around, making the transition from one maneuver to another more abrupt, but with less planning required. When flight assist is off, the dynamic changes, 
Since everything is relative, any command you give must be manually countermanded. A small input for three seconds can have the same rotational impact as a large maneuver for a single second. You don't have to move your controls as far, but you are moving them more, constantly making tiny adjustments that add up to larger maneuvers. It's generally not a good idea to mash your controls around, as this tends to lead to overcorrection. Deliberate, smooth, and consistent movement of controls are the key to success with Flight Assist Off. The end effect here is a smoothing out of your flight patterns. Instead of abrupt transitions from one turn to another, maneuvers start to blend together as you naturally start planning farther ahead. Eventually you'll find that countering one maneuver becomes the natural start of another, and another. You are more connected to cause and effect, and that fact changes the way you think about flying. Flight Assist Off requires you to know and understand your lateral thrusters, since they become essential to holding lines and adjusting your vector without needing to sweep the nose. This means that Flight Assist Off is particularly strong in situations where you want to hold momentum while maneuvering, or where you need to fire on targets off your vector. This is why Flight Assist is a favorite for PvP and for Thargoid-related content. It's also useful for specific racing applications like Buckyball, though its usefulness isn't universal. For example, Flight Assist works better in Thargoid Maelstroms, where the effects of the cloud will constantly batter your ship. It's also helpful on high-gravity worlds, when docking, or when maneuvering close to larger objects, like asteroids, planet surfaces, or structures. Turning Flight Assist off in these areas isn't bad, in fact, it can be helpful practice, but it also isn't as practical when you're trying to complete other tasks quickly, like when grinding or working in team missions. However you feel about it, Flight Assist is an important system to learn and understand. Every pilot should be familiar with how their chosen ship handles, with Flight Assist on and off, and be prepared to use it when appropriate, since even large slow ships, like the Type 10, gain additional maneuverability when Flight Assist is disabled. It's an especially critical skill for combat, and one that savvy traders can use to gain advantage in escaping threats. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.